Well, hey, we are. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. And this particular little 10 minute excerpt is talking about what is iniquity. Iniquity is that thing in our spiritual life after we have gotten saved. We've asked Jesus, forgive us our sin, come in our heart, and save our soul. And we keep something in our life. Now, I kept smoking for 12 solid months after I got saved. And after God spoke to me, about the first week after I got saved, the Lord started dealing with me. And smoking is not something a person who is going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ needs to do, he said. This is what the Lord told me. This is a thing of the world. That little cigarette by itself has become a God to you. And when that God calls, you go. And the Lord God of heaven said, you cannot serve two masters. Now, I'm calling you to follow me with everything in your life. That means I'm going to require you to be accountable for what you do with the dollar bills that go through your hand. Now, not only is the cigarette a god to me because it's a fleshly thing, and it is a desire to have that which is not good for the physical body, and it's not good for the spiritual witness that I'm doing the same thing the world's doing and I'm saying I'm not like the world I'm, I'm saying I got saved I'm saying I'm doing the opposite I'm saying I'm living the opposite I'm saying I'm going to clean up wash up and do away with these things and yet I'm portraying that I'm doing the same thing not only am I doing that, I'm wasting the substance God gave me, the money God gave me. Wow. Oh, it kills me. I'm talking with people who are sitting with a pack of cigarettes, two packs, three packs, sitting there, and they're smoking them up, and they wouldn't give a dollar to the neighbor next door who needs a drink of water. They wouldn't give a dollar bill to, the, to a bum on the street. Yet, they would burn it out and throw it down. Not only, wow, I don't need to get on this subject because this subject burns me up. <laughs> That's kind of a conundrum, isn't it? Uh, smoking burns me up, and it does. It burns me up. It, it infuriates me that a man who says, I am a Christian, could smoke five, seven, twelve, fifteen dollars a day, seven days a week, thirty-five dollars a week, we'll say minimum, seventy dollars a every two weeks, $140 every month, smoke it up while other people are dying and going to hell because the provision's not being made to bring them in and to win them to the Lord. And that man that's taken this provision God gave him and he's burning it up. And oh my goodness, that, that really bothers me. Psalm 51. Find your Bible right now. Put this machine on hold. Find your Bible. Get it. Open it to Psalm 51. Keep it there for a day or two. Meditate. 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 Take the first verse. I could talk 10 minute excerpts from now until the stars fall out of heaven on the first verse. The first two words, have mercy, 
have mercy. And then he says, upon me, O Lord. Here's a man asking God to have mercy on him. According to the multitude, God, you have all of these mountains and these heaps and these piles of mercy. And you have this multitude and these piles of tender mercy. Wow. It's one thing to have a piece of steak. I have no bottom teeth. I can have a piece of steak. You can give me steak all day and I can put it in my mouth, chew it up. I got to spit it out or swallow it whole because I can't chew it up. But it's another thing to get a tender piece of steak that I can chew up and it becomes granulated and I can easily swallow it and digest it. This is what David's for, asking for. David said, Lord, I know you got mercy, but I need some tender mercy. I need, you know something, you could throw a baby on the table, snatch his diaper off, and throw another diaper on him. Yes, you've changed him. Or you can take that baby and lay him up on the table, take his diaper off, and take a nice, warm, clean rag, wash him out, powder him down good, and slide another diaper on him, and he's going to be a happy baby. And that's some tender mercy. Instead of just throwing it at him, you did it. It's one thing to, to make somebody a couple pieces of toast in the morning, throw them on a plate and set them down before them. It's another thing to make them a piece of toast in the morning and put some butter on the toast. You're beginning to show a little thought and a little mercy. And there's another whole thing to make a man a couple of pieces of toast in the morning, put a little butter and a little jelly on it. Wow, it's getting better and better. But then there's another whole thing to make a man a couple of pieces of toast in the morning, put butter and jelly on them, and a fried egg. Wow, now you're getting down to the tender mercy. Now, you're getting down to where you're fulfilling the whole thing. And that is really something. David asks the Lord to blot out his transgressions and his iniquity. Why did he say in verse 2, cleanse me from my sin and my iniquity? The reason he said that was he realized that he deliberately, deliberately sinned against the Lord of heaven. And because he deliberately sinned, he had to look up to God and he had to say, God, you were watching. I was watching you. You were watching me. I was looking up to see if you were looking down. And you were looking down to see if I was looking up. And you were looking to see if I was going to be obedient or disobedient. And I was looking to see if I was going to get punished if I was disobedient. And now I see I am being punished in my own mind. And my own heart is condemning me because I continued in and did what I wasn't supposed to do. Now, I acknowledge my sin. Look, where is that? Verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Whatever it was he did, and we know what he did here, but, but just whatever it is you do, this is sin before God. And I've done it. I've done it over and over and over again deliberately sin against the Lord and he has taken his tender mercy and put it over me. 